What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're getting ready to install, actually I already have started installing some of our hardwood, white oak treads and risers. In the previous video, we talked about how to cut skirt boards and install, how to cut and notch out your skirt board on the side here for an open rise tread scenario. So if you didn't see that video, check that out. What we're gonna be doing now is I'm gonna show you how to go about the process for cutting these risers. We need the cuts to match exactly to our skirt board, which is often out of plumb. Same thing with the treads. So I'm gonna show you how to get these fit perfectly. Now you will notice here, these risers are a little bit different. They're not mitered into the skirt board like you would typically see. We've actually got our risers running through square cut, and then they're actually sitting out past our skirt board a quarter of an inch. So a little bit different install here. Uh, I'll kind of show you my process. Hopefully you can learn a few things and let's get right into it. So I'm ready to start installing. Um, before I got to this point, there was some prep work that went into this. As you can see, I've got all of my treads stacked up here. Uh, they've got their mitered return on one end and then I've got all of my risers right here as well. These are one by eight white oak, but I did do a little bit of prep on these in that, trying to find one to show you. On this top edge, I actually ripped a little bit of a bevel on here, uh, just about probably three to five degrees on this top side and that gives a little bit of space for me to put some PL premium. And then whenever the tread sits down on top of it, you still get a nice tight connection up here. There's a lot of details that go into this install. So basically I ran this through the table saw, but you'll notice if you get real close up here, I didn't run that rip all the way through. I left it square right here. That's because uh, this backside is gonna be exposed, so I didn't wanna take that bevel all the way through. As far as prepping the treads go, um, my material vendor uh, ordered 11 and a half inch treads. That would be ideal for a 10 inch run on a stair. Unfortunately, on this stair, I have a nine inch run. So I had to rip all of these treads, uh, the backside here, and then the nose was too long. So I had to jigsaw that out, cut the nose off again at an inch and a quarter, re-round over the nose. And then unfortunately, there's also a little bit of an exposed nub right here from their um, basically tenon joinery. So, not an ideal situation. It would have been nice if those would have been ordered uh, at the correct width, but a little bit of extra work for me to get to this stage here. But it's good to just get that all done. That way, once you're ready to start installing, you can just go to town. Now, whenever I do these, I usually go about four or five treads and risers at a time, get them cut, install them, and then move up to the next level. So I, that's what I did this morning so far. I got these done, now I'm ready to start my next section up. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut about four or five risers uh, and get those fit, and then we'll move on to the treads. A lot of you are probably familiar with Collins tread gauges. Uh, it's very, I mean, they're a must have. I use them all the time. You just take a one by two, they slide over the end, and then you can clamp them down. I will say there are different Chinese manufacturers that are making these. You can purchase them on Amazon. There are, they're cheaper than the Collins tread gauges. I've purchased a set. They're not nearly as good of quality. Uh, these have a spring mechanism and stuff built into them. Just go ahead and spend the money on the Collins tread gauges. They're a lot better. So we'll start off by getting our, uh, our length kind of approximate here. And I'm gonna loosen one side and get it tight on the end so that it's tight up against the skirt board the whole way. Then I'm gonna come over here and I need to get the end of this tread gauge lined up 
with the edge of my skirt board. I'll tighten that down again. That's nice and flush on the outside. I'll come over here, double check this side again. It looks good. Now I'll carefully pick it up and we'll go over here and do a cut. Okay, so whenever I do treads and risers, I love to just drop a, a trash can down. It's a great work table. And then you can just plop your risers and treads on top of that. And then I love to use the Festool HKC track saw for cutting. Uh, it just works really good. So I've got a riser plopped down here. I made sure I've got the top edge, which has the bevel oriented up. I start by aligning the bottom of my tread gauges with the bottom edge of the riser. Now, you'll remember we're running our risers past our skirt board, skirt board a quarter of an inch. So I need to make sure I account for that whenever I cut this. I've already done probably 20 of these risers on the lower flight and what I did here. I've found the process that works great for me is I just use this little gauge block that I always carry around. It's exactly a quarter inch thick. So whenever I go to make my mark, I'll align my gauge block with the end of the riser. So that's nice and flush right there. You can see that quarter inch margin there. We'll come down here to the other side. This is white oak. Um, some people, and I do this a lot too, will use a utility knife to make the mark. Uh, I find with the white oak, I prefer just to use a pencil line and just make the mark like that. So now we'll go ahead, take the tread gauge off. And with the HKC, you have your black splinter guard on here, which is awesome. If you've got a fresh splinter guard, all you've got to do, I usually throw my left leg up over the top just to uh, stabilize things. And then you're just going to align the edge of this black splinter guard with your pencil line and make the cut. Now in this case, I'm just cutting it off square. I could do a bevel if I wanted to. Um, that way you'd have a little bit of room for some adhesive behind there. I've been just doing it square and I've been pretty happy with the results. So I'm just gonna stick with that, just keeping it a little bit simpler. Everything is so complicated. Whenever you find a picture off of Pinterest that the homeowner thinks is cool, it's gonna cost the carpenter a lot of time every time. So this was a Pinterest idea running these risers past. Now, obviously the way I install these, I need my riser to go down uh, past the top of the tread, which means we're gonna have to notch this uh, riser piece out later on. That's gonna be a step that we're gonna attend to in a little bit. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a bunch of these. And then the next step will be to do this notch right here. Okay, so now's the part that is a little bit tricky with this riser install. We need to be able to notch out this riser so that the tread will slide under the riser right here. So we're gonna be taking out a small square down in this corner. To do that, I basically shim up one side, get it about where it's supposed to be, and then I want to get this exactly aligned top of the riser and top of the skirt board. That should be perfectly flush and in alignment. I'm gonna keep some firm pressure on that. I cut this little block haphazardly out of a piece of tread. It's my little gauge block here. I'm gonna push that up against firmly so that the riser doesn't fall down. And I'm gonna make a pencil mark all the way around this thing. So front, and then I'm also going to mark the back side here, and we'll cut out that little notch. Um, that way we can go forward with permanently fastening these. It's very important. We've got to make sure we cut that out first. 
So with cutting these, you really want to be uh, as precise as possible. Um, you could even use a handsaw. I actually started out using a handsaw and it worked really well, very precise, just takes a little bit too long and I can get pretty good results just using a jigsaw. You want a sharp blade, you do not want to have it on your orbital setting. Uh, you want to just have it straight up and down. That's going to give you the most control of your cut. And so what I do, I've got my pencil line here. I kind of start at an angle like this, and then I rock it up so that I can perfectly follow this pencil line as best as I can. So here, here goes nothing. So then after that, I'll flip it over and I can see my pencil line on the back side here. This does not have to be as precise. Okay, so pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, so we've got our notches done on all of these that I've pre-cut. Uh, next step is to start nailing the risers in place. We're going to use a lot of PL Premium in this process. If you remember before, I talked about how with this skirt board, we beveled our cuts. That's important because at this stage, you'll get that nice tight connection back here, but there's just a little bit of space because of that bevel for us to put some adhesive in there and get a good connection as well. So we'll start here. I'm very generous putting the PL on then give myself a little bead on the back side here of my skirt board connection. One thing I also do is I try to put a little PL here where the riser meets the skirt board. Uh, you don't want to do a ton because then it won't go in tight, but just a nice little bead back there as well. So now I'll kind of put this in place and put a little shim under there on that side. And here I'm going to continue to use this gauge block and set the riser up on top of it. And I should also be nice and flush right here as well. So I'm going to check that. That looks really good. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brad nail down here and the reason I actually think I dropped that down a little bit whenever it moved. I'm going to pull that up a little. There we go. Now when I measured, I was measuring from this point here when I used my tread gauge. Uh, one thing I didn't show in the previous video is that whenever I nail on this skirt board, I go back through after I nail it on and I make so that everything is plumb. Uh, that's very important because we want our quarter inch reveal to be exactly the same. So it's very important to ensure that that's plumb. So I've already got it really close, but after I put that bottom nail in down here, I'm going to go ahead and also take my little gauge right here and check the top as well. I'm just a little bit proud. I'm gonna bang on that and get that perfect. Um, just using your finger to feel that connection that it's perfectly flush and then I can finish nailing that. So nail top, middle. Now I'm gonna come over here to the opposite side and I want to see where level is at. A lot of times the framing is not cut perfectly level, but I also want to ensure that I've got a little bit of space under here for adhesive. And that's also important because we want to ensure that whenever we put this tread on, that the front edge of our riser is making a really nice connection here. If, it, if we install the riser too low, we're going to have a gap under here. We don't want that. So looking over here, this is actually level 
and that looks really good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that in place. And what I do is I put a couple nails in the center as well. Now one of the keys, whenever you uh, install your stringers and like what I did here where I had to nail on blocks to the risers, you want to ensure that your center stringer is a little further in than your outside stringers. That'll make it a little bit easier for the whole installation. So now here I wanna check after I nail my riser on, I've got my level on here. I've got a solid 16th gap. I wanna go ahead and tap that out and get this nice and straight the whole way across. Now we will be screwing the riser from the back side as well. That'll draw it close to the tread, but we also want to ensure that this top edge is straight. So another step that's very important, use a level and get that nice and straight all the way across. Okay, so our next step is gonna to be to start cutting our treads. One little side note, whenever you're doing this kind of work on a stairs, you'd kind of just have to kneel down a lot. Personally, I like to use a kneeling pad like this. This thing is an absolute lifesaver. Using like my pro knees, you know, the big knee pads just doesn't really work well for stair work, but uh, this gives a nice level of protection. I'd actually like to find one that's a, a little bit longer, like three foot long. It'd be perfect to, for stairs to do the whole way across. But anyways, protect your knees, get yourself a kneeling pad. We're ready for treads. So same concept as what we did with the risers. We're gonna use our template here, get it adjusted so that we're uh, tight up against our skirt board. And then this operation here is very important that you be extremely precise. The reason is if you cut too short, you're gonna be tight on the end here, but you're gonna have a gap down here. If you cut the tread too long, you'll be tight up against the skirt board, but then where your nosing wraps around on the skirt board here, on this back side here, you'll have a gap. So you want to try and get it as perfect as possible. Basically, we're putting our tread gauge up against here, adjusting it to the skirt board, and then getting it nice and flush on this back side here. This back corner is the most important part for me that's where I'm actually going to measure from whenever I lay this on the tread. Cutting the treads, same thing, plop our tread gauge template <clears throat> down on here. We want to align the two back points. And then as you look right here, we want to get the edge of our tread gauge perfectly in line with where that miter return is. That's our crucial point to line up. Then same thing, we'll come down here with the pencil, make a line, and then it's just a matter of cutting with our HKC track saw again. As I showed before, I like to throw one leg up over the workpiece just to stabilize it. We'll drop that splinter guard right down on the pencil line. Take your time, get it, get it just right, front and back. Now, ideally, you take the whole pencil line and not any more. So I don't really see just a teeny tiny bit of pencil line on there, hardly any, so this should be just right. Okay, so here's our test fit. Just sliding it in place here. Make sure it's tight up against here. And the way you know if you got a good fit is if it's tight on the side. And then if you come around the back side here, uh, we want it to be nice and tight as well. I'm off the skirt board just a hair. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's gonna be just fine. And then over here, my cut going into the skirt board looks really good as well. So I'm happy with that. One thing I'm gonna go ahead and just take it care of right now is I'm gonna drill some pilot holes in the, in the underside of the riser. And that's gonna allow me to 
put a screw from the back side of the riser into the tread. That way it pulls it tight and we get a really nice connection on all of these riser to tread joints. So just using the drill here, trying to stay at the proper height. I'm angling it a little bit. Gonna go all the way down, four, four screws per tread. At this point, we've got all of our treads dry fitted in place. They're all looking good. Um, as you can see, they're loose. Um, just need to put our adhesive down, nail them in place, screw them from the backside, do all that fun stuff. So after I've got a handful of them cut, you just kind of rinse, repeat, go through the same process over again. So in order to have access, I'm gonna go ahead and pull each one and I'm gonna move it up a step. And that'll allow me to be able to screw from the backside and work with the adhesive and everything right here. We're ready to install our tread. As you can see on here, I've got a lot of PL Premium all over the place. Key connection points, I've got it on the side so that the end of my tread will connect into the skirt board with some PL Premium on each of the stringers. You remember here in our skirt board, we beveled that a few degrees, so I've got some adhesive in there. And then on our riser, we also beveled that a few degrees, so I've got adhesive across there. The one final step that's a little bit different on the tread is right before I go to install it on the back side, I'll put a bead of glue and smear that across really nicely, get a nice even coating. You don't want to get too much glue on this. Otherwise, if you do, it'll squeeze out uh, the top whenever you uh, screw it together. So you don't wanna have too much. Now we'll just carefully kind of drop this in place like so. Now the first thing I like to do is come down here on the end, give it a little tappy on the end, make sure that I'm tight up against the skirt board, and then I'm back, and the first nail I'll place is right here. I'm gonna take my mallet and just tap all the way across this just to make sure I've got everything down tight. I can even look underneath here and check and see how things look to get it nice and tight as well. So the next nail I'm gonna place is gonna be back here. This ensures that everything stays all the way back where it should be. I'll put one in the middle stringer right here. And then coming forward a little bit down into the skirt board again. And then I like to put about three or four more across the front. So that's nailed in place. Again, you can kind of look down underneath at this point and just ensure that everything got sucked down nice and tight so it looks really good underneath there. Now we want to come up to the back side of our riser up here. So now we want to screw our riser into the tread from the back side. I like to use these two inch GRK screws. Uh, they, work, they work really well. They're easy to drive and uh, they kind of have a self augering uh, tip on the end that doesn't split wood nearly as badly as a lot of other screws. So I'll get that started in my pilot hole. 
and I can watch that pull up nice and tight. So now if you come up and look at this front edge, it's very, very nice and tight. So that's what we want. So I'm going to keep rocking and rolling on installing these treads. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stairs are a lot of fun, intimidating at first, but they're really not that difficult. It's really just about planning ahead, attention to detail and good systems and processes along the way. So hope you enjoyed it. Check out our previous video where we covered how to install the skirt boards, cut those and get those figured and fit in place. That'll be a great video to watch also. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one.